Tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name's Fernando Mateo. Uh, I'm an immigrant to the United States. My parents immigrated here in 1950. Uh, and I grew up in New York City my entire life. I don't know any other place like I know New York. And uh, at the age of 14, I dropped out of school uh, and I went to vocational training school. While I was going to vocational school, I had a part-time job uh, with a, a Jewish family who adopted me and gave me the opportunity and taught me what it was to work hard, taught me good values, taught me that there's a, a different side of, uh, of life. And, uh, and I really appreciate it. It made me who I am today. It took me out of my, my community, out of the hood that I lived in, and it opened up the world to me. It gave me an opportunity to see other things in life. And uh, I can't thank them, thank them enough because as a child, they formed my, who, I, who I am today. Uh, I, I realized that I could be anyone who I wanna be. Uh, when I was 17, I got married uh, and I, I started my own small business. Uh, I went into the carpet business and I, in the Lower East Side. And there I worked very, very hard, 18 to 20 hours a day for many, many years. And I built my company to being one of the largest, if not the largest minority owned floor covering company in the United States. Uh, by the time 1989 came around, I was a pretty wealthy guy. And I decided to go to Rikers Island and teach, train, and find employment for first time nonviolent offenders. Kids that like me uh, could, I could have been one of them. I could have been a statistic if I didn't have the opportunity that, that I got. So I taught them a skill while they were in. And when they came out, uh, I'd get them a job in the unions. Uh, I did this for three years, uh, and it was probably three of the most wonderful years of my life because I saw how I could change uh, people's behavior. I saw that if, when you give opportunity to others, they will take advantage of that. Like I took advantage of the opportunities given to me. And we were able to save dozens of, of children, of, of lives uh, by making sure that these kids didn't go back to jail. In 1993, I did a program called Toys for Guns. This program was able to get thousands of guns off the city streets uh, in weeks. It's probably the largest and the biggest gun exchange program ever in the, in the United States. And it was done during the Christmas season of 93 and extended into 94. In, 90, in, in, in 1999, uh, I was asked to help the taxi industry uh, organized because they were being killed and murdered. And, and I did, I organized them and I, we set up the New York state Federation of taxi drivers. And till today, uh, our organization is going very strong. We have about 30,000 members and the murders stopped. Uh, they stopped substantially and the assaults and the robberies, there's only been a rise lately during the de Blasio years. But during Giuliani and Bloomberg, crime was really um, down substantially. And I did the same thing with the bodega owners in 2002. So I have spent the last 30 years of my life not only becoming successful and building different businesses and creating jobs, but I also spent it giving back to my community, making sure that the communities that I serve were also also had the opportunities that I could bring to them. So as an urban Republican, I've done most of my work for the democratic community. I've done most of my work for the poorest community because Democrats don't do it for them. So it takes a, a, an urban Republican to come in and create the changes that they need in order to show them that there's a better way of life, that there's a safer city, that someone will fight for them. And I've enjoyed it. No other candidate has the experience that I have regarding creating jobs. I've employed thousands of people in New York City. I've created many, many opportunities for thousands of people in New York City. And I've saved countless lives in New York City. And I've done it because I felt it was the right thing to do. I'm not a politician and I don't like politics. I'm doing this because 
If I don't, we're going to have another four or eight years of a democratic city that can't really afford it anymore. We can't afford to have another de Blasio in office. And I believe that I can create the changes, create the opportunities, bring back jobs. You know, in my administration, public safety would be number one. We need to get our cops back on our streets. We need to support our law enforcement officers. We need to make sure that every New Yorker feels safe when walking out in the streets. Whether you come from New York City housing projects or you come from Fifth Avenue, you should all feel to you should all feel safe in New York City. Right now, that doesn't exist. And we're tearing down our police department so bad that we're not gonna find officers that are gonna wanna come uh, and use and be a police officer as, as a career. So we need to be very careful and make sure that we teach our law enforcement the right thing, but make sure that they are respected. We have to make sure they respect the public, but that the, repub that the public uh, the, um, uh, respects them as well. So once we get public safety under control, then I, I would focus on our economy and building our small businesses. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Without small businesses, our city would be bankrupt. It's not corporate America that makes us who we are. It's the mom and pop stores, it's the restaurants, it's the hardware stores, it's the convenience stores, it's the bodegas, it's our cab drivers that generate the taxes that keep our city working, right? Corporate America always gets the benefits of city taxes, of tax breaks. We need to make sure that our small businesses get those tax breaks so that they can continue creating more jobs. I'm a small businessman. I employ a few hundred people in New York City. And guess what? No one has ever come to me and said, if you employ another hundred, we're gonna give you a tax break. Well, guess what? We need that. We, Amazon doesn't need $3 billion in breaks. They've never asked for it, right? But small businesses need it. So I would encourage any small business that comes back to New York City, I will give them a, a very su substantial tax break so that they can come here and stay here. We need to bring 25 to 50,000 new small businesses to New York City and give them the $3 billion we were giving Amazon to create 25,000 jobs. We can create three to 500,000 jobs with those tax breaks, not just 25,000. So I would make sure that our small businesses come and that they flourish here. I would make sure that our kids 14 through 18 have a part-time job all year round. We need to take them out of their hoods and we need to put them in corporate America. We need to get them to work in small businesses, in restaurants, as busboys, as dishwashers, as whatever it is. We need to keep our kids occupied. I was preoccupied because I had a part-time job and I turned out to be an amazing young man. So we're not saying that they should drop out of school. No, absolutely not. What we're saying is we need to make sure that they have something to do after school so that when the parents are working and most of these kids come from one parent family, okay? We need to make sure that these kids can go from school to a job. They work four hours and they go home, do their homework and get ready for the next day. That's what we need to do. We need to save our future, which is our kids, okay? I would focus a lot of energy on that. Rikers Island, I would not shut down. I would make sure we reform it. I would, I would rename Rikers Island and I would reform Rikers Island into a, a rehabilitation center, not a jail. While these kids are in, if they learn something, like when I taught them, they will come out not being the same criminals that they went in, that they were when they went in. And I would work with the government to make sure we can pardon them so that they don't have a record following their life. Because this way, they'll never get a job. If they've got a record, they'll never get a good job. So I would engage corporate America, FedEx, UPS, Pfizer, Philip Morris, you name it, Con Edison. And I would say, can you hire these kids after school? And guess what? If you do that, I will give you tax breaks. 
I believe in welcoming the rich, not taxing the rich, because the rich are the people that invest in our city. They are the ones that we need to generate small business income. And why are you going to alienate them, push them away, and lose that tax bracket? We cannot do that. There's a lot that needs to be done in this city. Schools, I believe that parents should have the choice of where they send their schools, their kids. Their kid, the parents should have vouchers and they should decide if they want their kids to go to public school, go to public school. If they want them to go to charter school, go to a charter school. If they want them to go to Catholic school, go to Catholic school. I believe that a parent wants the best for their children. The New York City public school system failed me. I don't want the school system to fail these kids. I want them to have an opportunity that I, that I didn't have. But I would certainly, landlords, I would welcome landlords. I would encourage them to lower their rents. But the only way they can do that is if I give them, if the city gives them tax breaks for their business that they can then use to lower your rent. That's how we create affordable housing. But what we're doing right now is we're charging these landlords huge amount of taxes and the landlords pass it along to the tenants. The tenants need to know that if it costs the landlord $100,000 to maintain a, a building that has 20 units, guess what? Every apartment is gonna pay $5,000 more a year just because of the taxes that the city is charging. We will make sure that those landlords that reduce the rents for tenants get a tax break dollar per dollar. This way they're not at a loss and the tenants get the benefits. These are all things that I can do because I've experienced them. I'm not speaking because I have, you know, political views or I have a political plan. No, I'm speaking because I've experienced everything that I'm, that I'm talking about. No other candidate has experienced what I have. First of all, most of them have never had a private sector job. Secondly, most of them have never owned a small business. So they don't know what it is to get up in the morning at five, six, seven o'clock in the morning, open up a retail store and close it at 12 o'clock. They, they don't know what that sacrifice is about. That, therefore, they don't understand how to fix it. I would make sure that every city agency is a friend of our small businesses. If you go to the building department to try to get a permit to open a business, it's like, you know, you've got to work a year in advance because it takes them that long to give you a permit to put up three walls. And then it takes them another six months to give you the permit to open. I would streamline that. From the day you apply to the day that you open, they have five days to give you a permit and five days to give you a temporary uh, uh, certificate of authority so that you can open your business and start employing people and producing money. I would make sure that the health department doesn't go and punish restaurant owners the way they do or bodegas or supermarkets. They go out there looking to find these small businesses. No, I want them to engage with them and find out what the problems are so that we can fix whatever problems there are without having to find these hardworking men and women. I know that because I've been a victim of the city agencies. They are your worst enemy. When you go into business in New York, the government is your worst enemy. They make it impossible for you to succeed. Why, I ask myself, when we are the ones taking the risk, we are the ones creating employment, we are the ones paying the taxes to support every city agency. Why do they treat us like that? That's gonna change when I am mayor. I'm gonna make this the city that everyone is gonna wanna come to. New York City will become a happy city once again. Right now we are very sad and it's because of the policies and the politicians. Look, look at what they're doing to the police department today. They're letting anyone that wants to sue a police officer to sue that officer and that officer is on his own. He has to hire his own lawyer to defend himself. It's like taking a bulletproof vest off of a, off of a police officer and telling him, go into a shootout. You're killing the police department. We cannot do that. You know, we need to focus on things that make sense. That's why I'm running for mayor. That and so many other reasons. 
Every block that you walk on in New York City, there's a homeless person. We spend billions of dollars a year trying to find a solution for the homeless. And no one's been able to come up with a solution. I have a very simple solution. Let's go into the industrial parks where no one lives. Let's create a route for public transportation through, the, through that industrial park. Let's build buildings, housing for them where they're not in anyone's backyard and they're not bothering anyone and, and people aren't bothered by them and they're not bothered by people. Right now, they're putting the homeless into communities that people don't want them. So the homeless are uncomfortable and the community is uncomfortable. So there's a way to solve this. We have industrial parks in the Bronx and Brooklyn and Queens and Staten Island. Why not go there, build housing that is good housing for, and put mental health facilities, put food banks, create a community that they can live in and transition out of when and if they're ready. That's how simple this solution can be. That's why I'm running for mayor. You have such a big background, like you talked about. And so, yeah, I mean, what made you want to take this leap? You know, some would say, okay, you know, you've had a great career. Um, what, why did you want to, to do it, you know, again? And, and, or why did you want to take this leap and, and run for mayor and, you know, and do this? God's honest truth is that I didn't want to run for mayor. I am a happy person. I've got three children. My youngest daughter's a doctor and is having a baby any day within the next three months, right? My middle daughter gave me a grandson. She's a, she's a published writer. My son's an actor and works for sanitation. And I've been married 42 years to an amazing woman. I give her all the credit for my family's success. So I'm a billionaire. The problem that I have is that I love New York City. And if I don't intervene, we're gonna continue the same root routine that we have had the last seven years, seven and a half years. Mayor Bill de Blasio has been the worst mayor our city has ever seen in my lifetime. And he's brought us back 30 years into the Dinkins era. And we cannot allow our city to go down the drain. I have too much invested here and I know how to fix it. Every other candidate that I spoke to before I decided to run, I realized they were clueless. Their thing is rhetoric, power, and securing a job. I'm not doing this for a paycheck. I make a lot of money. I, I, I do very well. I'm doing this for the city that I love, for the people that I love, and for the communities that I've defended, which are the democratic communities in the city. No other candidate has done nearly what I've been able to do. And I am a Republican, a urban Republican, and I'm proud of that. And I'm the only candidate that can bring 500,000 votes. I can take 500,000 votes from the Democratic communities and bring them over to the Republican Party. That's why I laugh when everyone in the media says a Republican doesn't stand a chance. Guess what? They said that when Giuliani ran. They said that when Bloomberg ran. They said that when Pataki ran. And guess what? We had a Republican governor and two Republican mayors in the last 20 years before, before de Blasio, right? So I say to myself, how much more does the Democratic Party, how much more pain and suffering do they want? It started with Elliot Spitzer, governor, Democrat that had to resign. Eric Schneiderman, our attorney general, had to resign. Anthony Weiner had to resign, a congressman. Uh, we have Mario Cuomo now that's hanging on by a shoestring, probably will have to resign. And then we have Bill de Blasio. How, and by the way, I'm not even mentioning um, Sheldon Silver, who was the second most powerful man in the state in jail. So how much more of the democratic corruption and mismanagement do you want? Do you really want to stay there or do you want a change? 
Fernando Mateo will be your change and it will be a change for the good because I'm not speaking to you in, in college language. I'm speaking to you in blue collar language. You understand where I'm coming from and I understand where you're coming from and I know your pain and suffering. Bail reform, guess what? It should apply to some, but not to all. Every criminal in this city has a gun and they're out committing crimes every single day. Yet, law-abiding, hardworking, small business people, law-abiding people in New York cannot get a permit to carry a gun. In my administration, any law-abiding citizen that owns a small business will have a gun to defend themselves. I've seen enough robberies, enough murders, enough, th enough abuse by the criminals and all we do is protect them. Release them from jail without bond? That is wrong, that's unacceptable. As I said, there are some that it should apply to, but many and or most it should not apply to. That's what's making our communities a lot more dangerous. I want to talk a little bit, you, you mentioned it um, a little bit in here, but where do you stand on police reform? Police reform has to start at the top. It's not the cadets or the rookies or the police officers out in the street. It is the top of the ranks at the police department. It was Commissioner O'Neill. It was Monaghan, okay, Chief Monaghan. It was these people that made our police department so corrupt and so terrible. We need to make sure we wipe out that slate. We need to make sure that we take every top ranking police officer that trickles down that bad energy to the police officers and take them out and bring in a whole new leadership. Because most of our cops are good cops. They just have bad leadership. They have bad instructions. Remember, they follow rank. They follow the law. They follow their sergeants. They follow their lieutenants, their captains, their inspectors, and their chiefs. They do what they say. They don't do what they want. They do what they're instructed to do. So I would make sure we reform our police department, but I would start the reform up on top. The buck stops here with the mayor. It doesn't start with the police officer. He's instructed to do things and that's what he does. And if he's instructed to do bad things, that's what he's going to do. We will change that under my administration. We need to protect our cops, but we need to make sure that they've got good leadership. Uh, I also want to talk about a you know, huge thing that New York City has been going through the pandemic. And now, you know, we have the vaccination efforts and we're, you know, starting to see the light. Um, how would you continue to help the city you know, get through the pandemic? I am hoping that once I am sworn in January 1st, that this pandemic will be behind us. I'm hoping that we will never speak about this pandemic again, because now it's about recovery. If there is any traces of this pandemic, when I am mayor, we will get rid of it. We will make sure that we attack what needs to be attacked, that we protect the most vulnerable. That's the problem the city had. They didn't protect the vulnerable. They they trying to protect the healthy, the young, who don't want to be protected. And they forgot the people that have, have pre-existing conditions, nursing home patients, the elderly. Though that's where our energy should have been put. I'm not pointing fingers because this pandemic got us, hit us all as a surprise and no one knew what was going on. So I'm not gonna point fingers here, but now that we know what the problem is and who needs to be protected, I would put my full energy making sure that our seniors, that anyone with underlying conditions has the attention and the, and the care that they need. I, you know, we talked on a lot of different subjects. Um, you, you gave me, um, you know, your, your top issues. What do you want voters to know when they head to the poll? I want them to know that Fernando Mateo has a history with their community. I want them to know that Fernando Mateo is a small businessman that knows exactly what needs to be done to bring our economy back. 
I want them to know that I have worked with the police department for many, many years and that I've been a victim of abuse of power by many city agencies. And I will not allow that abuse of power to trickle down to them. I will put an end to it. I will make sure that city agencies respect our investors, our risk takers, our citizens. I will make sure that parents know that their kids are gonna be able to go to a school that they want them to go to. I want people that work with the homeless to know that I will work very hard to build them good affordable housing in industrial parks. And I will work with the landlords to bring our rents down so that we stop the gentrification of our city. I am a New Yorker. I've never been a politician. I tell them, don't trust politicians. Don't go for it. Don't bite the bait. You're a fish in the water and they're a worm waiting to take you out of the water to eat you. You know what? I will not do that. I will make sure that everyone in this city gets what's coming to them. That's why I need for them to vote for me. Forget that I'm an urban Republican. Forget that I'm a Republican on the line. Don't vote for a party. I beg you, don't vote for a party. Vote for the person. Vote for the person you believe in. Close your eyes and say to yourself, who can do the best job for our city? And you will open your eyes and see my name. And that's the person you should vote for. I have two kind of fun questions that we've been asking the candidates. Um, the first one is, do you have a favorite restaurant? And this may be hard to answer, but a favorite restaurant in New York City, or, or is it just too hard to pick? No, no, I have a favorite one. It's called Zona de Cuba, and it's in the Bronx, on top of the Bronx Post Office. And my second question is, do you have a hidden talent or anything that somebody might not know about you that you'd want to share? I dance salsa. I love salsa music. Um, I enjoy kids. I love kids. And I love to see success and success stories. That motivates me when I'm able to take a young kid, give him an opportunity, raise him, and then let him see him flourish the way I did. And I've done that with numerous kids. In fact, one kid is with me now. I, his father delivered him to me when he was 16 and said, this is your son. Do with him whatever you can. I need help. And that kid today is 25 years old. And he's a fine young man, manager. I mean, I, I just love good stories like that. That's what motivates me the most.